please send a message to General Mouton. Uh, General Mouton, please reorganize your division and attack the Union position on Hunnicutt Hill. I believe that uh, General Green's cavalry have uh, pushed back the attack from the Union forces on our left flank. Uh, I will send a message to General Green to assist you in your attack on the hill. I believe that General Walker's division will attack on the right flank. Uh, General B's cavalry are somewhere. I do not believe they would leave us blind and they will be out on the right flank somewhere. So General Mouton, good luck with your attack. I will see you on Hunnicutt Hill. Okay, well, thank you, General Taylor, for the situation update. So, as you can see, viewers, if you've watched the last two turns, uh, the uh, Union got a bit cocky and charged down off the hill, and they've been pushed back. So, they're in a bit of disarray on the hill, and now it is the... Uh, So it's time to attach and detach commanders. So I think uh, General Mouton's orders are to and um, take hit the hill. So I think he will probably attach himself to Polignac, the Frenchman's brigade. So he will attach there and give them a definite... Um, Plus, they're going to be charging up through there. They're going to end up disordered, probably, because they are touching the uh, woods there. The orchard. They have moved into the orchard. Uh, so they'll attach there. Um, and I don't think I need anything else to really happen. So everyone else, Walker's, Walker's division is going to be attacking up here. Newton's supposed to go up here, and Green's cavalry are supposed to hang on here all right so that's the the current situation so we'll see what happens so we'll go around and start maneuvering our units now I'll just try and maneuver them. Fresh. Oh, they got an eight. Then no, no problem. So what I'm going to do with them, I'm just going to wheel them around so that they can get uh, some more shooting to them. Next, I'll do Bagby's brigade. They are still fresh, but they are disordered. So we're rolling on the disorder table for them. They have an attached. Now, no, no one attached, but they have a commander in range of oh, 9, 10. So they're going to rally with uh, return to good order at least. And so they'll lose their disorder. So they're okay again. Um, this battery will unlimber. So it's just going to unlimber on the spot. So that was handy moving them up. So they'll be able to fire some uh, canister if I get uh, Newton's brigade out of the way. Now behind them, I've got a small brigade here. I'm just going to wheel them around up next to that gun, probably. Seven, that's no problem. There. Four standers there. So Green's cavalry division here is in a pretty good position. They're pretty happy with that. They've got their um, gun unlimbered again in a better position. Now it's going to be important here in the middle because we've got Mouton is supposed to be pressing his attack. He has attached himself. So I'm just going to do Gray's Battalion first. And they've got a gun unlimbered in front of them there. A couple of commanders. So they may cop a bit of defensive fire. Let's think about that. Poor commander within 12, and they are veterans, but they are worn now. So you're getting a plus two, so that's a seven. So they are okay. So seven, they rally, may half move. So they're going to rally, and they're going to 
move up Cape Bad Hill step into Oblique and move up yes they're going to charge that gun move up half they can move half commanders will have to displace so I'm just going to pop those guys back behind the lines where it's safe that's so they trot back there okay they've gone up there that's it that's their job they've charged the guns there so Polynax Brigade they have now have an attached commander which gives them a plus two they have an exceptional brigade commander so that's another one plus three they're veteran they're plus four and they're still fresh so they're plus five so they should get oh, a pun puts them on a six well handled may perform one maneuver so they are going straight up the hill they're going to rally and they're going up the hill there They're charging that gun and the disordered unit there. Luton is attached to them. We'll see what happens in the defensive fire, whether that's a good move or not. So they've gone up the hill here and up the hill there. So they're doing their job. Now, this gun... Here will unlimber on the spot there. All right, then Walker's division they are pushing up through the orchard, which is slowing them down. So we'll roll for the front brigade, which is Wall's brigade, and there's two, four, six, so they're worn now. So they're going to be. A no pluses they do have a commander in range so plus one for Walker being in range but uh, no bonuses for being fresh um, they're not outflanked or anything so they're going to be at a plus one for the commander that's all oh that's a two so a two wavering retreat beyond musketry and canister range hold position if out of range or fortified broken troops they remain disordered so they've got to retreat back out of musket range so they are currently out of musket range okay so they're wavering and they uh, hold position if they're out of range all right so they're going to hold position there that's unfortunate and they remain uh, disordered that disorder stays with them all right, so we may have to do a passage of lines here with a fresh brigade, Scurry's Brigade, who are fresh. They haven't taken any casualties, and they've got a commander in range. So they're a plus three. Three becomes a six, well handled, may perform one manoeuvre. So when they move through, they're slowed down in the, in the orchard. They're slowed down in the orchard there just check the rules and the new rules it's um, they're going to go up half their movement so they will just move back one inch they wouldn't be able to move five it's through their up. friendly unit okay we're learning okay so uh, randall's brigade have just moved up well handled result moved up through the woods at half rate so they move eight inches up through the woods and they're threatening that right flank okay then way out on this flank we have uh, these cavalry and they're fresh but they don't have any commanders out there they're out there on their own so we'll roll for a maneuver for them a two that they're fresh so that becomes a four uh well handled so they're okay so what i'm going to do with them is cavalry have Build around. Okay, then we've got these two guns which are off board. This one here has um, gone low on ammo. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, turn him around. Let's say he's reloading. So next turn he'll be able to shoot. And this one is okay to fire. Okay, commanders. So green will stay where he is. 
Taylor will move up and support the attacks in the middle. And Walker will move up into the terrain there so we can see everybody. And that's the end of the uh, Confederate manoeuvre phase. Okay, so I think we'll start with some defensive fire from over here first. The this brigade. And they'll try and concentrate their fire on Bagby's brigade, which are behind this fence here. No cover for fences in brigade level fire and fury. But it'll give them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven stands. Uh, where they've disordered, so half that rounding down is what they're supposed to do. So they've got uh, three, so three is not going to do much for them at minus two. Minus. Minus skirmishing cavalry, minus four down to one, so no effect there. Desultory fire and no effect, so they have fired. And there was no one else to combine with that, was there? No, there wasn't. These guys here, they've got one, two, three, four, five, five stands there. So five fire points, they're not disordered. They did have to fall back and they were they rallied back there. So five, five will give them a minus one. Um, they've got some guys out of the woods there. So a minus one and a minus one for so at minus two. Uh, a two, or oh, their shooting's letting them down this turn. So we'll move over into the middle. That's getting interesting in there. Okay, so there could be a bit um, bit of hurt here. So we've got this uh, rifled Napoleon gun, rifled a Napoleon gun with canister. And they have got uh, rifled muskets. So rifled muskets, they'll get two each. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, halved down to six. Plus the gun would be 13. 13 fire points on the uh on gray's brigade so 13 fire points will give them a plus two all right so plus two oh becomes a 10. So, uh, 10 killing fire brigade disordered and lose one troop stand charge checked so if the charge is checked they they sit back one inch they didn't quite make it in there uh, and they'll be disordered. They've lost a troop stand. Okay, so that gun has fired and that unit has fired in support there. Now if we move over like here. Disordered brigade there. They'll have, well they've got a gun there which is going to be firing canister at them. Rifle Napoleon at that point blank again for seven fire points. Oh, sorry, it's eight and more. Eight fire points. And then they got one, two, three, four. I'll say this one over here, five, five. So two, two and a half. So two plus that, so ten fire points on them. And there's any other shooting at them. So ten, ten fire points will give them a plus one. So a plus one. First. Plus one becomes an eight. So against a veteran unit, they'll charge home. Telling fire brigade disorder and lose one troop stand. But a veteran Dudley's dismounted cavalry. They've got a pretty clear target there. So one, two, three, four, five, six stands. Six stands at long range with their uh, rifled carbines, so six stands, long range, rifled carbines, one fire point each, so six will give them a modifier of zero. Nothing else happening there, no, they're not in any cover, so yeah, six will give them a unmodified roll of two. Oh, that was, that was disappointing. The shooting's let them down. They've checked those charges, but that's about all. Now, I don't think I've missed anything. If we have a look at the uh, the widescreen. Okay, so then we're going to have 
Green's division here are all going to line up and combine their fire points. Plus, with the help of uh, West's uh, veteran guns over here, we'll see how many fire points they can get onto Vance's brigade. It's 22. So, 22 fire points, they're getting a plus 4. No one's disordered or anything. All right, so a plus 4. Oh, they've rolled a 10. So, Brigade just disordered. They're already disordered, but they lose two troop stands. Ouch. That was some telling fire there. They've all fired. Oh, I forgot about this gun here. Hasn't even fired. So this gun will just have a long-range shot. If it's in arc, maybe I may have bumped this gun, but anyway, yes, it's got uh, cavalry over there in arc. Is it 21 inches? 21 inches for a Napoleon will give it three fire points. So three fire points will be at a minus two, skirmishing cavalry a minus three. Oh, he's low on ammo as well. Let's about that low on ammo. So, I'll say this gun is on low on ammo, and this, now this gun's low on ammo. And a 10 at minus 3. Uh, they are experienced, I believe. Experienced. So it comes to 7. They telling fire, they lose a stand. And they're disordered. Disordered over there. Brigade. Who are disordered, but they may as well have a shot. They're pretty close, so they'll have um plenty of fire points. They're in arc, but they've got one, two, so two, four, six, seven. Halved, so it'll be three. Three fire points will give them some minus two shooting at the artillery there. Three fire points, a minus two. A seven becomes a five. So it's an experienced, no, it's a veteran, veteran artillery. Seven becomes a five, lively fire. Brigade disorder or battery silence from cannonade, no effective, only musketry. All shoot at the unit in front of them. So it'll be th three because they're disordered. So that's a minus two. Two is nothing. Oh, here. So they're all in range, yep. So they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight stands. So eight fire points. Eight will give them zero. So no modifiers except for a minus one for shooting at uh, cavalry. Oh, so that's a nine of the... Uh, experience so nine versus an experienced unit telling fire lose one troop stand and they are disordered as well two four six eight nine so they all of the union are very close to having suffering heavy heavy losses and I believe that is the end of the offensive fire. On the bayonet, and when you charge, you like furies. Okay, so we do have one okay, charge. So we do have here one with... combat here, which is Polignac's brigade, led by Mouton. They've charged up the hill, came out of the orchard, so the orchard disordered them. There was an exchange of fire. And so the first thing we should do is um, work out who's fighting. And so I think we've got this brigade versus uh, Flory's brigade here, plus they have a support and a gun as well. So we'll add up the numbers. So the Confederates have got one, two, three, four, five, six compete, uh, stands. First one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So six versus nine. 
So that's a nice easy one, but usually I would have to refer to my uh, table. I'll show you that. So on the inside of my book, I have glued this cheat sheet so I can work out the outnumbering factors. So we've got nine verse six, so it's three to two. So that's just stuck on the inside of my book. So three to two, so that's the odd. Remember that for me, that's three to two. So we'll go back to the combat and add up the factors and so on. We'll have a look at the charge combat table. So we'll do um, the charging confederates who are veterans. So they're going to get a plus one for being veterans. Uh, they are still fresh. I just checked their numbers. So they are still fresh. They're not down to their worn status of five. So that will give them three. They're outnumbered by three to two. So they're back down to two. There's a negative. They do have an attached leader or an exceptional brigade commander. So that gives them another plus one back up to three. But they're disordered. So they're down to two. Um, so they're down to a plus two. Um, I can't see any other, other things for them. I'm going to give them rebel yell. There we go. Plus three. So the Confederates will be at a... Plus three. They'll be the red dice. I'll just stick that there to remind me. So they are a plus three. Then we'll do the Union who are experienced. Um, they are fresh, so they're getting a two. Uh, they're not outnumbered. They don't have an attached commander, but they do, are disordered. So that's a depth of their back down to one. Uh, they are supported, so they're back up to two. And we'll give them defending favourable ground that puts them up to a plus three as well. So it's a pretty even fight. So it's going to be three all. So it's just going to be a straight roll. Go. Oh, an eight verse three. So let's have a look at the table and see what that gives us. Eight verse three. So that's a plus five. So, driven back. Defender, troops disordered and battery silenced. Loser troops stand, your battery damage. Troops retreat beyond musketry and canister range. Cavalry can follow up and so on. And the attacker can carry the position. So, it is a successful charge. So, the defender troops are disordered. Well, they're already disordered. And they're going to be... Um, lose a troop stand, so they lose a stand. So they lose a stand. That's gone over there already. I've done that. They're already disordered. And uh, they must retreat beyond musketry and canister range. So the supporting unit has to go as well. So they'll have to come back at least back here somewhere. Where are their mates there? They're already disordered. And the guys are going through already disordered, so that's okay. And they'll uh, retreat back here as well. So they're already disordered. Uh, this gun will have to be silenced, and it will limber up and retreat beyond musketry range. And these guys can carry the position. The attacker carry the position, so they will just move up and take that position. So Mouton has led the charge and they have taken the hill. So I think that's right, and all these guys have retreated. Should give them like a huge uh, promotion. Okay, well that's the end of the charge combat. So as you can see that... Olivier's Brigade have followed the, their orders and moved up and taken the hill. The Union casualties are now at 10, so they will suffer a minus one to all their manoeuvre rolls because they've taken heavy casualties. They're at their heavy casualty break point, so the Confederates can claim a victory. Okay, so that's the position on Honeycutt Hill. There's a lot of disordered troops up there and so on. And suffering a heavy casualties uh, losses at the moment. But the Union will fight on and try and retake Honeycutt Hill. It can be done. I reckon that uh, 
we can get these units on this side, get them back up here defending, rally some of the units on the hill and maybe push off these veteran brigades who are getting a bit a uh, bit worn down, although Polignac and Bouton leading this brigade are doing quite well. Dismounted cavalry up here are in a bit of trouble. We do have some guns back there that could unlimber and uh, unleash some fire onto the hill. So let's see what happens. Okay, so the start of the phase, we've got to attach and detach leaders. We're going to need uh, the uh, extra morale and so on of the leaders to help out. So Dudley's dismounted cavalry over here, and Lee is, Lee is right over here, and he may be needed over on the uh, right flank. So these guys are going to be pretty much on their own. Um, so we've got Cameron... Cameron will come back and attach to he'll attach to Glory's Brigade because they are in front. Um, now Langdrum, uh, Emerson's Brigade has got uh, Langdrum attached to them, so I'll leave him attached to them. And then Lee, Lee will come out and go over and attach to his brigade way out on the right flank of those dismounted cavalry. So Cameron's there, um, and then we've got Franklin, so he may as well just stay over there and keep those guys in command. Ransom is an exceptional commander. He will just stay here and lend his support to all the brigades around him. And uh, that's about it for the attaching and detaching leaders. Let's do some manoeuvring and rally. Okay, so I think I'll start with uh, Lucas's cavalry out there on the right flank. Um, they're spent, but they can still contribute to the battle by uh, at least threatening uh, Green's uh, cavalry division there. So we'll just roll on the manoeuvre table for them and see what we come up with. So it's a four. And pause that. Yes, so they've got an attached commander which gives them a plus two and then they're spent, so they're back to zero uh, and heavy casualties, they're at minus one and uh, nothing else for them. They are not veteran, they're experienced. So that is, the key position hasn't been, they haven't lost the hill yet, they've still got some guys on the hill, so we won't give them that. So I think they're at a minus one, so that becomes a three. Wavering run off the table, so they'll just have to come back a little bit because they are within musketry range. But they're on the table and they're still threatening the right flank. But uh, not the result they wanted. All right, so next we have Vance's Brigade, who are also, uh, I think they're down to one, two, three, four, five. So they're worn, they're not spent yet. They're one off being spent. So they're worn, uh, so there are no bonuses there, but they do have a uh, commander, the core commander. I think Franklin's up on the hill behind them there, so he's within range, within the 12 inches. So they've got a plus one, minus one, so they're back to zero. They're worn, so no pluses there. Uh, their flanks are not quite secure, but they're okay, I think. So we'll just give them a straight roll on the uh, disorder table. And a three. So again, wavering retreat beyond musketry. Stop them, keep them out of range of those guys over there as well. Stop them getting shot at anyway. So they'll wheel backwards a little bit and come back up here and they're still disordered. So I'll just put a little marker there so I know that they retreated from that position just in case I do some defensive fire as they retreated. We've got uh, a battery up on the hill right in front of those guys i think that battery will stay there these guys did bounce back um and then okay so we'll roll for emerson's brigade they, and they have one two three four five six stands so they are worn but uh they have an attached commander so let's add up their factors so we've got an attached uh core commander they have a detached exceptional leader of ransom over there within range so that gives them a plus four. 
uh, their wards. So no pluses there, but they've lost a, a uh, heavy casualty, so they're down to a plus three. So we'll roll on the disorder table with a plus three. Their commanders are really helping them. And they've rolled a four, so that's a seven. So that would get them up to rally. Return to good order may half move. So they return to good order and they could make a half move. So they could charge is that unit in front of them. So what I'm doing, I'm just going to wheel them around a little bit. Like so. They can get a bit, a few more shots off. Could have charged in, but they would have been in point blank range and they're not ready to take any Okay, so fire. next we've got Flory's Brigade back here. They have an attached commander and ransom over there, an exceptional uh, core commander. So they're getting a plus four, uh, but there are no other pluses because they're worn. So a plus four, plus four on the rally table. Let's see what they can get. As commanders are helping them, oh, no problem. So they rally with Elan. Return to good order, may perform one manoeuvre. They're back in good order, so remove their... They're contesting that hill. It's only a small brigade, but they've one done well. Casually. I think I'll just try and get them to move up in support, just in case there's a combat. So a supported line there is better than nothing. They don't have any um, attached commanders, but they do have... Uh, Ransomed, exceptional commander, so they're on a plus two. Um, minus one for losses, although that wouldn't have mattered too much before. So plus two, minus one for loss, that's a plus one, becomes a four. I forgot about the losses last time. But at least they're in good order. Ready for next turn. So that's uh, those guys. Then we have... Dudley's cavalry on the flank who are disordered facing all of Walker's division in front of them. Four, five, six. So they are worn. So they're just getting a plus two. Uh, minus one for heavy casualties. So that becomes a five. Plus two, minus one, so it becomes a... Sorry, up one, becomes a seven. So they rally. A return for being disordered and they're going to hold their position bravely. Hold that hill. And then we can move some of that artillery over there that had to limber up and get out of dodge there. So we have Chicago Mercenary Veterans. So they're going to move up and unlimber. That gun's okay. It's going to move up and unlimber there, actually. It might just unlimber on the spot because it can add some firepower to what's going on on the hill same with this gun will unlimber on the spot so they can fire their artillery at those guys on the hill they have a gap there to shoot through so that'll be good for them uh, this gun is damaged but what it will do is it will move and unlimber i'll just move that stand over there and make a little gap for it and unlimber and attach to Flory's brigade so those guns have unlimbered on the spot so they'll be able to fire this gun has moved and limbered I'll just turn it around so just to remind myself that it can't shoot this turn the other gun's okay it had those guys in arc and that's it end of the turn I'll move commanders so I'll keep these guys he's attached he's attached he'll move back over here and help these guys and I think that's about it. So, some good rolls, some bad rolls. Some rallying, some, uh, some manoeuvring. So that's the situation. And we'll go into the defensive fire. Okay, so the uh, Confederate defensive fire and we I do remember that uh, the brigade that fell back there which was Vance's brigade okay so Vance's brigade I marked their, their position which was there that's the position where they fell back from so I'm just going to 
shoot at them with all these guys that were in arc and the the unit was about there i'll put a try to impose a photo over the top of that and i'd say all these guys we had to have a at least a, a uh, medium sort of range shot at them as they disappeared plus this gun low on ammo so the gun being low on ammo would have a uh, four inch shot at them so i'll just go one two three four five six seven eight nine 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 fire points plus uh the cannon at that range which is a mm, smooth bore so a smooth bore at that range let's say about six inches away smooth bore six fire points halved so down to three so plus the nine so we'll have 12 fire points so 12 fire points will give us the plus two so they'll shoot at them in that position as they retreated and it fell back there so plus two oh nine ten eleven so this is pass through fire against a experienced unit withering fire for a gay disorder to lose two troop stands oh so they've been hammered as they retreated back up the hill so the defensive fire caught them as they retreated back up the hill okay so they just lost another two two troop stands that brings the total to two four six eight ten twelve or oh, twelve twelve stands lost now for the union so that was defensive fire there grays here gray here so one two three four i didn't even bother finding that can it say four so down to two fire points i'll just shoot the artillery there but i don't think it's going to have any effect uh, two fire points is minus three five becomes a two no, not going to do anything so those guys have fired leading them in next to them at the yes, probably next unit in front of them and again they'll have one two three four five six they'll have three fire points at them no one else shooting at them three fire points gives them a minus two Oh, a seven. So, a seven versus a, an experienced unit. Uh, telling fire. Brigade disordered. And lose a troop stand. Oh, they're down to two stands. I think it's pretty much all over for the Union now. Um, they've lost another stand there. Then over this side. We might have a bit of fire from well Randall's Brigade. Randall's Brigade, yep, they're fresh and they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These guys are out of range. Eight. They're not disordered or anything. So eight fire points. Eight fire points. They are uh, dismounted cavalry. So Eight will give us nothing, so it's eight at minus one for being dismounted cavalry target. Becomes a six. And they are experienced. So six. Balling fire. Brigade disordered. Silence. Lose one troop stand if already disordered or broken. So they're not disordered or broken. So they just cop a bit of galling fire and become disordered. So they are disordered. And I think that's about all the defensive fire. Okay, so the offensive fire, we do have a little bit here. So we have this gun, which I think it did have these guys in arc. Yeah, it does just. It's going to fire a canister at them. I think he could have pivoted on the spot and fired anyway so he's just going to shoot at them uh he's a veteran rifled in napoleon at that range 
rifled into volume. It's going to be eight fire points. So these guys are really going to cop it. Eight fire points plus one, two, three, four, four from them. So that'll be 12 fire points because these guys are in good order. So 12 fire points gives them a plus two. So a plus two becomes a five. And they are veterans. Lively fire. Brigade disordered. Um, silence from cannonade. No effect if only musketry. So a bit of lively fire, but no effect if it's only musketry. But there was a cannon firing. So they fired. Brigade disordered. Or battery silence from cannonade. No effect if only musketry. Yeah, so they're okay. They're already disordered, so it doesn't make any difference. Cool. And then we've got a couple of stands here. Two. One fire point. And then we've got two artillery pieces here that unlimbered. One's at six inches, and one is at about seven inches. Yes. So they'll just have to fire ball. They won't be able to use their canister because there's friends in the arc. So I'm pretty sure that's okay. They could just fire ball at them. So that'll be four and four, so eight, nine fire points. Nine fire points will give us a plus one. So they'll shoot straight up the hill at them. Nine fire points. Plus one. Uh, yes. Away. A three becomes a four. Oh, disappointing, boys. So four or less first veterans is no effect. Those guns have fired. Now, I'm pretty sure they can fire ball, even if, if they've got friends in the... Um, whoops, those guys fired. They fired in offensive fire. So that's that's them done. We've got one, two, three, four, five stands. Half rounding down, so two stands at uh, one of Walker's brigades there. So two fire points minus three. Five becomes a two. No effect. From the bayonet, and when you charge, you like furies. Okay, so that's the end of the 4.30 turn. Both sides have had a go, and uh, it looks like the Confederates are getting on top. They've pushed up onto the hill, and as you can see, uh, the hill is surrounded, and the Confederates are ready for the final phase of the attack on Honeycutt Hill. Okay, well, I'll leave you with a report from uh, General Ransom's point of view and uh, how he sees the battle. General Ransom reporting, sir. We are outnumbered, vastly outnumbered on Honeycutt Hill. I suggest you send reinforcements straight away. We uh, are being pushed back. General Emerson's brigade, General Landham, have been fighting a gallant defense here, but uh, the Confederates have pushed us off the hill. We require reinforcements exactly now. General Cameron has done his best with his brigades. Dudley's cavalry are protecting our left flank, but we are vastly outnumbered and we need reinforcements now. Okay, so as uh, General Ransom calls for reinforcements, I think I agree with him and I was going to press on for another turn, another couple of turns and I think the Union forces would be totally obliterated. There is a what if in this scenario if we released some of the reserves from the next stage of the map, but you can have a look at the scenario available from the Fire and Fury website. But as you can see, we've got uh, full... Um, division over here, Walker's division, is uh, still pretty much intact, plus B's cavalry out on the uh, right flank there. So these guys are going to push around, and they're just going to swamp the Union positions without any reinforcements at this stage. They do have some cavalry up on the, uh, the left flank there, uh, well the Union right flank over there, they do have some cavalry left there, but they're all... Uh, worn and disordered and so on as well while walkers cavalry are reasonably fresh even though they're so small brigades they will be able to put pressure on those guys and i don't think they'll have much chance 
The attack in the middle has sort of stalled, but there still is a veteran brigade here in pretty good order, while uh, I think Gray's brigade are in a bit of trouble. So I think I'm going to call the battle quits at that point and maybe move on to another scenario, but it is a good battle to fight, but I would add those reinforcements or play the second day to give um, the Union some help. So you can see Walker's cavalry here pressing up here. Uh, Lee's uh, division of cavalry, dismounted cavalry here. Uh, Lucas and Vance's brigade, they're both pretty uh, in poor shape here. And then up on the hill, I think it's uh, Emerson's brigade has been fighting bravely, but they're about to get outnumbered. It's the only really intact brigade that they have left, whereas they have some artillery, a wrecked battery and so on. And you can see out in the distance that you can see Walker's brigade, uh, brigades, Walker's division and B's cavalry are ready to come around here. So we're going to call that a Confederate victory. Even though they had all the odds stacked in their favour, the Union had some chances, but a few bad dice rolls. Um, maybe I didn't play them as well as I could have, but I took some opportunities to take some charges, uh, but it didn't quite work out. But the purpose of the game was to learn Fire and Fury Brigade Level 2nd Edition and see some of the differences. So I hope you learnt something as well. I sure did. And I'm looking forward to having another game. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on the Creaky Gamers Historical Channel. So please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Please like and subscribe, and I will be eternally grateful. I'll see you again next time on the Creaky Gamers. Mm -hmm.